Hey guys, welcome back to Reed's Room. How you doing? Oh, great, thanks for asking. We're doing uh, the Bible today. So, let's get started. What's up? Okay, as I said in last week's video, I'm gonna have to do another video. The historical events of the prophet Elijah Amazing. I am going to be talking about what I read in the Bible and I am just so excited to tell you about it because it's kind of crazy. So, let me tell you why I'm wearing the same thing. I'm wearing the same clothes as my last video because it's the same day. I'm recording the same day. That's kind of cool, right? We're talking about Elijah. Elijah the prophet. Not Elisha. Elijah with a J. E-L-I-J-A-H, Elijah. So now, Elijah was one of the prophets of Israel. Israel was the chosen nation of God to tell them God's messages. And this is during the time where the Israelites like to not follow God's directions. So in our case, King Ahab, the, the present king, was someone who was an active idol worshiper. And what were you supposed to be worshiping? God. The prophets that belonged to God, the ones that always spoke the truth, were things that the king and specifically the queen, Queen uh, Jezebel did not like. She said to her, her husband, go kill them. Yeah, she, they, they just started killing off all of God's prophets. And Elijah came up, he said, he, uh, he came up to them. He was like, you know what? Because you're doing this, because you strayed away from God so much, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it so that it doesn't rain here for a very long time. And it didn't rain. <laughs> it did not rain for three years in that land. So there was, a, there was a huge famine. I don't think you understand what that means. It didn't rain for three years. That means they crops dried up. They went thirsty very often. I'm pretty sure there were some people that died around a three year mark. God told Elijah to go to King Ahab. And when he did, when he did, he was like, what's up? King Ahab's like, oh, is it you, the troublemaker? <laughs> and then Elijah's response was, no, I'm not the troublemaker. You and your family are the ones that cause this trouble. So fix your face. He told the king to gather all of all of his prophets, the ones, the prophets of the quote unquote ba ba Baal. Some people like to pronounce it Baal, Baal, I don't know. The, the idol that they were worshiping, bring all those prophets, all the people that worship him up onto, onto the mountain and they will have a demonstration. The proposition was this, they're gonna make two altars and make two sacrifices. The God who sends fire down to the sacrifice and burns it, you know, is the, would be the person, would be the true God. Elijah said, since there are so many of you guys, I'll have you guys go first and yeah, and then I'll go. From six to 12, the people who were worshiping Baal basically were screaming to nothing, cutting themselves, beating themselves up, saying, oh, Baal, I'm, I'm gonna need you to come strike fire down on this sacrifice so we can show that you're true. They were doing that for six hours, nothing happened. It was so bad that Elijah the prophet was making fun of them. He was like, hey, um, maybe you should talk louder. <laughs> maybe you should yell louder so that Baal can hear you. Maybe he's sleeping, but wake him up. Maybe he's traveling. Elijah's funny. After that, it was Elijah's turn. So what Elijah did, Elijah, Elijah was flexing on them. Let me tell you what happened. He prepared his altar, he prepared the altar for God. And what he did to show how powerful God is, he took the altar, he put the sacrifice on it, you know, killed everything, put it, it laid it there. He drenched the, uh, the altar with water. Now, I don't know if any of you guys know what it means to like start, start a fire, but Usually when you have water on the wet on, on the sticks and the sticks become wet, the wood, the fuel becomes wet, it's you can't light it. But Elijah's point was, yeah, y'all are gonna see how powerful my God is today because this 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 is this altar, it's drenched with water. So yeah. He prayed to God, he said, God, show these people who you really are. And right then and there, pillar of fire came down from heaven. Right on that fire, it scorched up everything. It destroyed the, the uh, it destroyed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones that the altar was made of, and it evaporated all the water. Gone. 
everything was gone. And then after that, the people turned on uh, turned on the on the false prophets and basically killed them. So after that, after that, he uh, Elijah told the king, the rains are going to come now. Now this is the this is where I, this is the important part. This is where I was I was like, wow! now you're gonna have to do some math here. You do a little math, okay? Okay. You guys know about, the, uh, you know how when a child would get pinned under a car, they would go and pick up, like a mother would pick up a 3,000 pound car to pick up, pick up, pick up the 3,000 pound car to get the child out, out, out from under there and do it like it was nothing. The tire rolled over his head and he was stuck under, his whole body was stuck. So Archuleta put his best foot forward. I just grabbed the car and just lifted it up and the adrenaline was pumping so much and tires came off at least a good 10 inches off the ground. Within seconds, someone pulled three-year-old Mario Munoz away from the car and to safety. Now does that, that's, that's kind of crazy, but we've seen things like this happen before. Now, I've always wondered how that was possible. A lot of people, like people say, oh, it's your adrenaline, like, or just, just crazy things. Like you get very strong when you're, when you're in trouble, but that doesn't make sense. It turns out God was really behind all of that. In 1 Kings 18, 46, it says, the Lord gave his power to Elijah, who had tightened his clothes around him and ran ahead of King Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Now. That's kind of interesting. So the mountain that they were on, where they did the sacrifices, um, where they did the sacrifice and God showed his power. Uh, after that, Elijah said, the rain is gonna come now after the three year period, after the three years had, come, had gone up. So he said, go tell the king that the, uh, the, uh, the rains are gonna come so he can get on his chariot and go back to the city so he will not be caught in the storm. Cause I don't think you're gonna wanna get caught in a storm that's been waiting, that's been brewing up for three years. So he said, go back to the city, hurry up, you need to go now. In this verse, it says that Elijah ran ahead of the uh, ahead of the chariots. Now let's let's get the let's get all the all the information out there for you. King Ahab was riding on his chariot. The average top speed of a horse is 40 miles per hour. Now the distance between Mount Caramel and Jezreel, the city, was about 31 miles. That's not a hop, skip, and a jog away. That's that's a long time to. Uh, that's a long. That's a long distance. So through the Lord's power, Elijah ran, must have ran 45 miles per hour. Usain Bolt can't run that fast. The fastest man in the world can only run up to like what 27.3 miles per hour, and that that uh, that. Uh, record was only in a 10 second race. Elijah had to run 45 miles per hour for 31 miles. If you do the math, now we're, this, this is the math, this is the math I'm talking about. We have to do the uh, the distance divided by this divided by the speed to get the time. We're gonna, we're trying to figure out what the time is. 31 miles divided by 45 miles per hour equals uh, 0.68. We multiply that by 60 because that's how many minutes are in the hour and you get 41.3 minutes. At my fastest, it takes me 10 minutes just to run one mile. Elijah ran 31 miles. So it just goes to show that that's kind of crazy. A lot of people just speed by this verse and just say, oh wow, that he ran. No, he didn't just run, he ran. He was the fastest man on earth. My name is Elijah, and I am the fastest man alive. U Usain Bolt has nothing on Elijah. This just goes to show that <laughs> running at 45 miles per hour for 31 miles and arriving at a destination in less than in less than like what two four hours is humanly impossible. Elijah and I, we serve a God that created the universe. So all things that align with God's plan, align with His will, it's possible. Like the instance with the lady in a car. Like we see that, we see that, I don't like, we don't see it every day, but we've seen it enough times to recognize that it's something that's ha that has happened before. And it's like, oh, this is, that's kind of crazy, but like, why? It's God. That's the only way, that's the only thing that could make it happen. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I mean, that's, that's really hard to say. I, I was so excited. To Bro, the fire alarms keep going off in here. I don't know why. Like they went off like right before I started recording this. Fire, fire, fire detected. But we didn't have, there was no fire. There was no smoke. There was no, nothing. And then when I tried to turn off the smoke detector, it said too much smoke. There was no smoke. Have a great day. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, If you want more Bible stories, you could read the Bible. <laughs> or you can just, I can just read them for you. And I can like make it 
Ooh, cool. Uh, yeah. Bye. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go. I hope you. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, oh well. Like the video because I know you did. I know you did. And you should totally subscribe to my channel so you can see other videos like this. Turn on the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video. But you won't be able to do that unless you subscribe to the channel. So. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. You know what this means. You're gonna watch my other videos now. Yeah.